California, sunny California, I don't think so. It was just really, I mean, the, the Warner Av crew was basically, you know, we didn't all have to live on Warner, we just, it was just a group of like skaters who all skated together and then hung out in the evenings and, you know, partied, what have you, like did this, that and the other, you know. So me and Bulala were living in the, in the, in the flip van for a couple of weeks and we needed to get an apartment. Andrew and Brian were living just down the street. Yeah, me and Molly, we had an apartment in the Ocean Breeze apartment complex, Warner Avenue, a lot of drunken nights, 30 packs of Budweiser. And yeah, it was good fun. Yeah, me, me, me and Ali lived, uh, you know, we had our little spot. We got into the place, uh, Ocean Breeze Villas. Fuck knows why it was called that. You couldn't get an ocean breeze to save your life there. Uh, you know what I mean? But, and then we had Mark Baines came to stay. And uh, <laughs> it was just funny. Mark was starting to do like all right out here and getting some other sponsors and what have you. So, uh, so one day me and, me and Bulala just ripped up his return plane ticket and went, you ain't going anywhere. You're staying with us. Yeah, Mark Baines, yeah. yeah stay, he stayed in our apartment at some point. I remember carving in like the Piss Trunks logo with the razor blade on me all the time. I can't remember if I did it or if we convinced him to do it on his arm. But I know that he still regrets that. <laughs> carved it. For life, scarred for life. People would come in, come in and like hang out and then like go like a week later when they couldn't handle it anymore and do you know what I mean? Stuff like that. He was pretty outgoing and stuff. Like I remember him like always messing me because I was shy and quiet. He'd be like, You're too shy for your own good, like you need to like talk more or escape more and like get out there, like let us see you, you know, like he'd kinda mess with me like that. Like, don't be so shy. He does crazy stuff. I remember tripping, like the first time I saw him skate a mini ramp, I was tripping. He was so sick, huge grabs, like tweaking them, everything. Like it was amazing, yeah. Alex Moll had like some technical skills for sure, like more unusual back tricks. You know, a normal day over there is never a normal day. You know, it's like, who knows what happened the night before? Who knows what mission someone's on? Like, you know, it's like some, you know, some mornings someone, be, they'd be out skating and what have you. Some mornings in the summer, it'd be like, all right, we're gonna jump in the pool, we're gonna go to the beach for a bit, and then we're gonna film later on in the afternoon. I think everyone got tortured in one way or another, um, including myself, with other ways. I mean, Bulala would just torture me by living with him. It's quite easy, you know? Ali used to make sure that he pushed all the buttons on Alex like every fucking time they get drunk. So it was always like an Ali beat down. Like I, Molly would beat up Ali a lot. Like I've seen him fight so many times. Like Molly, Molly has a good a good temper too. You know, like he he's a fucking savage beast. And whatever. I remember I slept in Al Alex's room and like pissed in his closet or something, and he was not very happy about that. That was my drinking partner right there. <laughs> See, Alex Moll and, and Ali Bulala, they went ahead and got an apartment in the same building as what we had. So you had Alex Moll and Bulala in one spot, then you had us in another spot, and then these random girls we knew in another spot, and Piercy and Oren and another. So we all had this one little apartment building that we all kind of had our little spots in, you know? And uh, Molly, man, like, that dude kills it. Like, the flick is just like so out of control, man. And he kind of was like almost a, like a father figure to Bulala, you know, like they, I mean, they go way back into like whatever Flip was called before Flip, you know, and Moly being like the, like almost like the, the superstar and Bulala being like the new Am of some sort. And like watching those guys like during that moment of Warner, they were filming for a big Am video that I, what did it come out in? Probably 411, dude. Like, yeah, that was huge for those easy riders, man. And they were going to town for that video part. Moly too, dude. 
Yeah. Moly, who's actually, we called him DJ Moly because Moly is actually a DJ, a producer, can make great music. And I think for one of the Baker videos, well, I think it was Baker 2G, he made the song, you know, like, yeah, 30 cases of booze or fucking something like that, man. Who needs money? I got booze. It's better than money or whatever. I don't know what it was. It was, it, we, no, we, we, uh, we used to watch this movie Life with, uh, I think it was uh, Eddie Murphy and Martin Lawrence. And there was this one, this one little, uh, we were like, oh, who needs money? We got Kate and booze. That's better than money, man. Al yeah, Alex had done stuff I'd never seen before. The way he would do, the way he even did his kickflips was, was amazing to watch, you know? Like, you could just watch him do them on flat, the way he catches them and things like that. And he actually, whatever, you know, I told him this about like his late show bits and stuff like that. I remember doing those in the early 90s and I wanted, I started kind of copying him, like trying them again after I met him and stuff like that. He did them too good though, I could never do them like that. Uh, I remember front boarding drop down rail and shit in my pants, like, you know, but I knew I had to get it for the, for the, you know, for the project I was working on at the time. And luckily I got it. But no thanks to you, Bulala, who was doing cartwheels behind the bloody rail, bugging me out, you know what I mean? Like, going, oh, great. I've got to try and slide this thing, and you're doing all this flapping around in the background. I used to bollock him for it all the time. <laughs> I think that was eight times we went there to try and get that because it was at a police station and we were getting kicked out here and there and then the last day finally got it. Molly, he's he was more on my level because like he, he was an older guy and he'd been drinking a long time. See, a lot of these guys they they they, they drank before but not like that. But I've always drank like that. But um Molly was like He's, you know, you know where he's from. You know, like he, he's not putting up with no bullshit. So he was like a big, big drinker, funniest cunt ever. Like he's still so funny. Like I love him to this. Like he was definitely like a big brother kind of style for me. It was, I don't know. He was just kind of like the dad of Blala at that point, and was killing it the same amount. But it might have been a little hard because Blala was getting a lot of attention at that point. Like, since I've got such bad switch mob, like, people started calling them moly flips because it just is all sort of one movement, and I basically mob it down and do it badly. You know what I mean? I'm like, I got the, I got the worst switch biggie heel ever. Like, Tom Penny was like, what is that switch 180 late, late heel flip shove it thing you do? And I was like, it's a switch big spin heel flip. He's like, nah, it's not. Like, it's like, it's weird. You do it all in one fucking thing. And, and then kids at the HP Park would start to call them that, like, moly flips and whatever, and I'd be like, oh, God, don't. I mean, that's flattering, but, like, don't call it that, because that's not what it is. Or maybe it is, because I do it so badly, so poorly, that, that you know, people think that's my own flip. Alex, I, and Dan's, and, and like there was like two offsets that would skate together. We would skate together a lot. We would go out on our own missions and hang out and late at night Alex would like come over and like wake me up in the middle of the night with like a Jaeger bottle and we'd just go downstairs and drink stuff Jaeger, which is an insane thing to do. Hangover hangovers but like for Jaeger, but like that's that's the type of shit that went down that was awesome. Like you could just anytime like walk over to someone's house before the internet, it was before cell phones, so like in order to hang out you had to go over the house or pick up the landline and hope somebody was there. You know, you had to like, just show up. So yeah. I think that was conducive to everybody like living so close and yeah, hanging out. Just like the rest of them, all good humans. Privileged to being a part of like that whole time and like I've, I've had to, got to witness and like hang out with some of the best skateboarders on the planet, do you know what I mean? It was like a, it was a really fun time, it was a really carnage time, it was a humbling time. Uh, it certainly taught me a lot, like, you know, either whether it was through skateboarding tricks or just through life, like, it was brilliant. So, um, yeah, Warner Avmob, remember yous forever. <laughs>